Hello there. Welcome to Just the Dis. We talk about Blu-rays here. And today I am coming back to a company that I like very much, and that is Flickr Alley. They've done a lot of wonderful film noirs in recent memory. I highly recommend uh, Bitter Stems comes to mind in terms of recent Blu-rays, but um, No Time for Tears. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff coming out of them. Uh, uh, repeat performance is a recent one I've talked about here on the channel. Uh, this is a new one as part of something they're calling Flicker Fusion, and this movie is called "The Whistle Is The Whistle at Eaton Falls," and it is from nineteen nineteen fifty something fifty one, and um, fascinating movie that I'd never heard of before. This Blu-ray. The restoration that's been done for this is quite stunning, I must say. Uh, it is directed by Robert Siodmak, who uh, is a big classic film uh, film noir director. You know, um, he did the uh, Phantom Lady and uh, just you know the Killers and just tons of um, sort of classic film noir. And this while it is not a film noir, has a certain downbeat nature to it that makes me want to associate it with film noir a little bit. Uh, but it's much more in line with, like, I don't, it's funny, I kept thinking about Blue Collar. I kept thinking about Paul Schrader's film Blue Collar when I was watching this, in that it's it's a story about um, a small town, in this case, uh, Eaton Falls, and it is, uh, I want to say New Hampshire, and they are basically uh, a factory town, and the whistle in the title refers to this whistle that was at a shoe factory, I think, at the beginning of the film, and we hear that the townspeople can set their watches by the whistle you know, that goes off in the morning and at night to signal the beginning and the end of the workday for this factory. And what happens is that factory ends up going bankrupt. And there's another factory in town, and it, it's the Doubleday Plastics Factory. And they end up getting the whistle. Like, they literally tear down the whistle from the shoe factory or whatever and bring it over to the plastics factory. And now the plastics factory is the centerpiece of the town. And we come to find out that they are actually kind of in their own financial trouble. And that is to deal with, uh, you know, just their prices have gotten to a point where they're probably going to have to lay some people off. And so what you end up having is a, you know, labor versus management dispute. You have sort of a union versus management thing happening and that's what made me think of um blue collar in fact there's another side to that that uh sort of comes up in blue collar and that is that basically what you have here is um lloyd bridges plays a guy who is the head of the union at this plastic manufacturing uh plant and he finds himself in a position at the beginning of the film to try and negotiate with management about this new thing they're trying to do, which is to bring in these new machines that will increase their efficiency and allow them to basically stay open. It's not even, it's about being competitive, but it's also about the money that they save in order to remain, you know, a, a business entity that's open and working and able to pay its employees. And what they need is for the labor to agree to allow you know one employee to run two machines and this will also end up meaning they might have to lay off half the staff which will then allow them to again re reach a profitability that will allow them to stay open and so we're just at the beginning of that conflict and then something happens and suddenly uh there's an offer to the Lloyd Bridges character to be you know, uh, heading things up. And so you get him suddenly going from the union side to the management side and suddenly realizing, oh my gosh, there's so many complications involved here 
you know, whether it be from, you know, getting a good salesperson that can, you know, sell our product that can then convert the inventory into cash that allows us to pay our loan, which is what we had to take out to get the new machines. And, you know, we have to go and bid on a Navy contract and that's all about, you know, the lowest price. And, you know, there's all kinds of these problems, you know, including having uh, some folks inside the union that are very anti-management. One of them played by uh, Murray Hamilton, who, of course, is the um, the mayor from Jaws. He's great in that role. Um, and then, you know, it's there's also like some some folks within the organization that end up being problems in terms of they really don't care about labor. And so there's all kinds of, you know, just conflicts and drama within this company that we get to see play out. And it really seems like a tough, you know, thing, you know, and, and you could look at it as sort of a, um, a macro look uh, metaphorically at a, our entire economy on some levels. Um, and it's just a fascinating film. Uh, I thought pretty well done by Saad Mac and it is produced by um, this producer named um, Louis de Rochemont. And I didn't know that much about him, but he was this sort of heavyweight producer, um, a guy who worked with Daryl Zanuck and, you know, worked, you know, independently and with, in this case, with Columbia. This opens with a beautiful um, Columbia Pictures logo. Again, the restoration will be evident from that very first frame. But, um, you know, definitely a guy that seemed to take a lot of credit for a lot of the work he did and rightfully so apparently he had a great sort of nose for material and wanted to do interesting and socially uh, conscious films in some cases and so he he looms large over this this production I guess um, there's a great commentary track on here there's actually a few nice features uh, commentary from film historian uh, and author Alan K. Rohde, who I'm a big fan of and who has done a great deal of work on noir films and just knows his stuff. Um, gives a great history to the film, talks about Louis de Rochemont's relationships and his progression as a producer, uh, some you know slight conflicts between him and Robert Siodmak, and just lots of great stuff. Rohde even has a point of view as a having been a factory worker in the seventies. And so he's able to comment on some scenes that he finds to be maybe not realistic and some that seem to play out more so in terms of the spirit of what he dealt with in terms of his union um, experiences. Uh, then you have Louis de Rochemont remembered a personal reminiscence from the grandson of um, uh, El Pierre de Rochemont. Uh, insights into the restoration, a demonstration of the digital restoration and reconstruction process, isolated soundtrack. Um, uh, Carlton Carpenter sings an archival uh, audio recording of a couple songs. A booklet essay, uh, an excerpt from Richard Kazarsky's Keep Em in the East, Kazan, Kubrick, and the post-war New York film renaissance that covers Louis de Rochemont's career during the time Wh Whistle at Eaton Falls was produced. So you get that, you get a nice little booklet. You know, we like our booklets. And um, yeah, it's also got an early performance by Ernie Borgnine. I believe his first role technically, according to Alan K. Rohde, but the film he did after this was released first. Um, but sort of his debut, and he's got a decent sized role as one of the labor guys in this. Uh, Anne Francis is in the film. It's got um, Dorothy Gish. Um, she's plays a very big role in the movie as well. And yeah, just a really fascinating look at, you know, this little town and the difficulties of running a factory and just a business in general. Just a really neat movie that I just wouldn't have known about at all if it wasn't for this Blu-ray release. So uh, I want to definitely thank uh, Flickr Alley for putting this out. Um, this is an all-region disc, so you can watch it anywhere in the world. Um, and I'm going to keep an eye on this Flickr Fusion line. As you can see, the packaging is a little different. It's a just straight Blu-ray case as opposed to their usual clear case. Um, so that'll definitely be uh, the, the way that they probably package these moving forward. But uh, 
really solid and a little less expensive than their normal releases, which are always worth the money in my opinion because there's so much that goes into them. But this one has a lot for a little less uh, in terms of cost. So definitely worth your time. A big discovery for me this year, The Whistle at Eaton Falls from 1951. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.